G'day everyone, it's Sam. Today's practice will be a tutorial on how to nail your crow pose. So crow pose is an arm balance and it's probably uh, the most foundational, probably the first arm balance you'll learn. And it can open up many doorways for poses to come from that. So when you're ready, we'll use some props today. If you have a bolster, first and foremost, we'll use that. If not, just a, a rolled up towel, a pillow, couch cushion, whatever. That's just gonna help us to get rid of some of that fear. So when you're ready, let's begin. So the crow pose is one of the most foundational arm balances you'll play with in your yoga practice. It's probably going to be the, the first one that you're introduced to if you're coming to a vinyasa or a hatha class. So it requires a few different things. One of them is, is definitely bent arm strength. So important if you're watching this video, maybe warm yourself up with a few chaturangas. So there's definitely that bent arm aspect. There's also, which is often forgot, the connection between the rib cage and the thighs. So one of the ways I like to really warm up when preparing for arm balances is to come into a forward fold. So really trying to create this connection between your rib cage and your thighs here. So absolutely bending your knees if you need to. And maybe even just hanging out there for a minute or two. So you're just training your torso and your legs to start to get a little more comfortable meeting together. So we've got our bent arm strength, we've got our rib cage to thigh connection, and what we also want to find is a relationship between the triceps and the knees. So the triceps and the knees is probably the most common way that you'll be taught this if you go to yoga classes. There's a lot of meat on the triceps, so there's, a, there's more surface area for your knee to rest on the tricep. It's, it's not necessarily the the most beneficial way to practice your crow if your intention is to transition from crow to other arm balances. So because the crow pose is the foundational pose, there's, there's so many places that you can take this pose once you get comfortable in the crow pose. So there's a thousand different ways you can do this pose and I'm sure you may all have your own yoga teacher and they may teach you a certain way and there's no right or wrong. Today I'm going to teach you the way that I like to practice the crow pose myself as a transitional posture towards other arm balances. So, much like you would in a chaturanga, unlike a push-up you would do in the gym. So if we were in the gym, we necessarily, oh, we might rather, have the hands out a little bit wider, elbows pointing out towards the side as we lower and lift ourselves off the floor. So this engages more of the pec muscles and even into the front of the shoulder. Because we are coming into an arm balance, we want to work strength in the arm. So we wrap the elbows in towards the body. The biceps are facing forward, the triceps are facing backwards. So when we lower down, say we're warming up through our chaturangas, we're actually incorporating a lot more strength in the triceps. So by wrapping those biceps forward, leaning forward, as we lower down, I'm hugging the arms in towards the body, and then I'm using the strength of the triceps as I press back up, as well as the chest. So as opposed to taking arms out wide, it's more strictly chest rather than the tricep aspect as well. So definitely hugging those arms in and you can do as many of those, those chaturanga push-ups on the knees or on the toes to really warm yourself up if you can. So after we've got our arms nice and warm, we're hugging the elbows in, biceps facing forward, triceps back. And the way I like to come into the pose is from a forward fold to begin with. So by folding forward, I'm encouraging that connection between the, the rib cage and the thighs. I'm bending into the knees so I can allow those two to more comfortably meet each other. So as we mentioned before, most commonly you'll probably be taught this pose with triceps to knees, triceps to knees, so knees nice and high. And that way when you lean forward, the top of the shin is almost resting against the back of the arm, which is a, a great way to learn. So I would come from my forward fold, <coughs> I'd create the connection between the ribs and the thighs, I grab my hands down onto the mat, wrap the biceps forward, start to bend the elbows. So what I'm trying to create is as little space as possible between my arm and my leg, and my leg and my torso. So everything's almost sandwiched against each other. So palms press flat, biceps wrap forward, thighs and ribs connect, knees are on triceps. So I just get comfortable finding that connection between those three points. I press the hands down, pull the fingertips back towards the palms. So activating the fingertips, 
will give you a little more bite into the mat. So if you start to lean forward, then you've got a little bit of action from the hands there to stop you from falling forward. And our trusty bolster is here, just in case we happen to go a little bit too far. So that's our safety net. We don't want the safety net forever, it's just when we're first playing. So, ribs and thighs meet, triceps and knees meet. Elbows bend, knees bend. Palms press flat, fingertips bite into the earth. Now as I start to lean forward, I want my hips to lift because I'm working towards a stacking of joints. So I come up onto the toes, I keep leaning forward, and I'm looking at the bolster to start with, because if I look back through my leg, it can result in a little bit of a roly-poly, and that's the last thing we want. You wouldn't drive a car while looking in the back seat. So we'll look forward, just start to lean forward. And maybe this is where you come to, and that feels fine. You get comfortable there, maybe just lifting onto the big toes. Pressing down through the inner part of the hand, wrapping the elbows in, that'll help to engage your pecs as well. If you feel a little more space, maybe one float can lift and hover. One foot can lift and hover rather. Then maybe set that foot down, lift the other foot. Lift and hover, lift and hover. If you start to feel a little more comfortable, gentle lean forward, maybe both feet lift. We point the toes and squeeze the heels in towards the butt. Press through the inner palm, hug the elbows in towards each other, pull the belly in towards the spine. Because everything is active, everything's stacked, I can stay there for quite some time. So you start with the bolster if you have the fear of falling. Now I know for myself when I first started, I was a little bit silly, I never really had that fear of falling. So the bolster wasn't an issue. What I struggled most with was finding the stacking of joints, so getting the hips nice and high. So when you first start out, it's a lot of pressure to have on the back of the triceps. So if you get some small bruising, just know that is uh, completely to be expected. At first we worked the stacking of joints and then as we progress, we work to find a little more activation in the belly and trying to almost lift the knees a little bit lighter off the arm so the pressure is not all going down. We are trying to find an uplift of energy as well. So as I mentioned, there's many different ways to, to teach the crow pose and the way I like to practice it because I use it as a transitional posture. The same setup, but instead of knees high on the triceps, I take the knees a little bit lower, so they're almost above the elbows. You see where I have tattoos on the back of each arm, and that's exactly why I got them there, so I know where to put my knees in a crow pose. And that's a joke. So the same setup, ribs and thighs meet, knees bent, hands round, biceps wrap forward. And there's a lot less meat just above the elbow, but you'll notice when I set the knees up, it's a little more tricky to try and find a spot for them to safely sit in. Almost like you're trying to click them in like they're pieces of Lego. You notice as I start to lean forward, once I lift my feet, my joints are completely stacked. My hips are above my knees, my knees are on top of my elbows, and my elbows are on top of my wrists. So there's so many more places I can take this pose now. Because the joints are stacked, it's a transitional posture, there's a lot more opportunity to play. So let me know how you go. If you have any questions below, please jot them down, like and subscribe, and if you've got any more suggestions for videos you'd like to see, any other poses you'd like to work on, please let me know. Thank you.